So at the age of 18, in my gap year, three weeks, I headed round Europe on a bit of an interrail trip. From the good, the bad, to the ugly, to the beautiful cities, to the people. Enjoy coming along on the adventure. Good morning guys and welcome back to Unjaded Jade. So I woke up in Paris and I had a banana for breakfast, which is my gourmet breakfast. And I also picked up a roll from the bakery and I just headed to the train station. I caught a train from Paris to Annecy. And this is just my interrail pass, which I actually won from the EU in the Discover EU competition. And basically you have to fill in every train or bus or boat that you take before you take it. So on this journey, I just just filled in my travel journal so I wrote a bit about Paris and my experience. I also tried to keep track of the costs and how much I was spending so I just went over all of that stuff. I also revisited my itinerary for the next few days. I then arrived in Annecy and god this place is so beautiful. I'm currently just trying to find the hostel but genuinely I am in love with Annecy. I've been here two seconds and I love it. It feels like a holiday place. The weather is gorgeous. There are mountains. There's the lake. The people are really nice. It has a really chill vibe. I love it. So I headed straight into the center and there was a cute little market going on. I just headed around by the canals. They had really cute little shopping streets. So my only food spending of the day is this vegan cookie. Um, I highly, highly recommend the app Happy Cow to find vegan options near you. It's so good. But yeah, this whole place just felt like a bit of a dream. Like something from a film, it was just stunning. So this hostel had a kitchen and basically for breakfast I had packed a few small packets of oats which I prepared at home. And basically DOV style I just had this with some boiled water from the kettle and there were also some free tea bags so I just had some green tea. I did some research online last night about Annecy and I found out that there's the main market on a Sunday, Sunday morning and today conveniently is a Sunday so I think I'd be stupid not to check it out. I then went and explored Annecy in the morning and it Oh, it's just so stunning. I literally had to pinch myself. Even though I got to the market quite early, it really didn't take long for it to get quite bustling and busy. So I'm pretty happy with my purchase. I just bought a waterproof phone case because I'm planning on going in the lake at some point. I think it would be quite cool to just get some shots. So it was eight euro. I got it for six. So I probably could have haggled more, but my French. <laughs> he literally only spoke French. And I was, I was quite impressed with my conversation. Like it was pretty stunted, but got the point across. For literally 99 cents, I've got a huge full-on baguette, so I'm very French. I really love how it didn't feel that touristy and there were just so many locals there going about their daily lives. So I'm just sat eating my French baguette. The sun is shining and I've just been to a French market. I'm literally sat in the most beautiful location ever. Life is beautiful. People think you get lonely during travels, but in reality, it is very, very easy to make a lot of friends. Literally, you just have to hold bread and you have friends. <laughs> I've eaten almost the whole baguette. I've just got this left and I'm gonna wrap this up and save it. I'm now gonna head back to the market and get some fruit. So I think I'm gonna get some bananas and I might get some like peaches or something to eat now. I still am in awe though. I hope I can watch this back and like it'll conjure the feeling that I'm feeling right now. A lot of the bridges in Annecy are quite famous, for example, Lover's Bridge. So I headed to kind of the more touristy viewpoint spots and I finally went to the lake itself, which did not disappoint. I then decided to rent a bike because I heard that this is the best thing to do so in Annecy. I got myself a bike with a little basket for my fruit and I've got a lock and everything. My plan is to ride to Sevrier, which is where the stand up paddleboard place is. I haven't booked it yet, but that's the plan. Look at my stylish hat. The only catch is I have to get this bike back to them by 6 p.m. Otherwise, I don't get my passport back and I can't continue travels tomorrow. So, yes. Look at the lake. What a treat to cycle next to this. I'm just cycling. I obviously can't film with my proper camera while I'm cycling. I've just taken off my jumper because it's so warm. But whoa. I actually just love being alone because there's just so much freedom. I'm just exploring anywhere that I want to. They also had some really gorgeous gardens and forests. Right, I've just locked it up and moved the toilet quickly. I just made the dumbest rookie mistake ever, okay? So I came to this toilet, I've been searching for a toilet for the last 10 minutes. Oh, and I walked in straight as a woman left because I thought that's what you do. Basically, I didn't notice I got 
blasted by water, so I'm soaking wet. My socks are completely wet through because apparently when someone leaves, the whole toilet disinfects itself. Now I'm just wet. What kind of toilet disinfects itself? The whole room literally it just like blasted cannons of water. And because it was such a hard way to get out, you had to like click all these special buttons to get out. So I was just there getting blasted by water like, oh my God. Oh. So I located this beautiful spot of the lake where they had the sand up paddle boarding. So I'm super proud of myself because I found this place and I was just cycling along and I, I saw the stand up paddleboard sign and it was actually the one that I'd been researching and like I walked up like the whole way on my own. I secured my bike at a little bike rack and I just spoke to the guy and now I'm going paddleboarding. <laughs> um, it's really exciting so I'm gonna go for about an hour but you pay after so I'm gonna get ready. Like I'm so proud of myself. This is so spontaneous. I'm just going on the lake completely on my own i've literally never done this before and um, let's just do it why not i did it i'm literally standing up right now i want a stand up paddle board i'm just paddling along and it's so stunning lake annecy is actually one of europe's cleanest lakes and the water was just so clear and beautiful so i just paddle boarded across the lake as you do but yeah i kind of just kept stopping in disbelief to be honest so I just did some stand-up paddleboard yoga. Whoa, honestly, trying to do a down-facing dog is the craziest sensation on a paddleboard because the world is upside down. Like the horizon obviously like flips and you're kind of shaking because you're trying to keep the balance of the paddleboard. But at the same time, it's the coolest, coolest time I think I've ever done a down facing dog. Yeah, <laughs> I love the freedom. Because if I was with a tour or with family, like I wouldn't just sit here and do yoga, so. I also attempted to film me doing some yoga, which really failed. Okay, so it's a little bit colder than I thought, but like, ah! <laughs> what am I doing? <laughs> this is crazy, right? <laughs> oh, I'm tempted to put my head under. I don't want to ruin my hair though. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, the changing area was these luxury mini tents in the open. So I went and just got dressed and I caught another ride on my lovely bike. So I'm just cycling along, living my best life. Although I can feel the storm coming in. So that's a bit worrying. How creepy is this? I'm in like a weird castle tunnel. I am super proud of myself. I just got back to the Jardin Europe. <laughs> I cycled the entire westerly side of Lake Annecy and I got like right down to the bottom of it. I was so proud when I saw the end of the lake. I was like, it exists. And then I had the debate of either going on the other side or coming back, but I heard that like the storm's coming in. So I was like, oh, I'm not sure I trust myself on the other side that I haven't been yet. And I know that it was more like mountainous. So I went back the rain definitely is still coming and it's a lot windier. So I put on my my jacket but i'm just so proud of myself for even doing that because i am not a cyclist like i can't remember the last time i rode a bike like it's that bad so for me to consciously hire a bike then to like go further than i had to because i i was going to cycle just to sevrier for the stand up paddle boarding so to go further than that i'm very proud of myself and to come all the way back so my legs are aching a bit but i think Plan. I need to return the bike, then I might go get another cookie because that was so good yesterday. I still have some rice with tomato sauce, fancy, left over from yesterday. So I'll probably go eat that. I'm still shook that stand-up paddleboarding only cost me 12 euros today for an hour. Like the sign said 40 euros and I had basically signed myself up to pay that much. Either he thought I was a nice person or maybe those were summer prices or something, but it was only 12 euros, which is mad. The hire of the bike was 20 euros for the day until six. I ate all the fruit I bought this morning, apart from one banana. So now I'm feeling actually a little bit low. Basically all the restaurants I, went, I wanted to go to that had vegan options, they were all closed because it's a Sunday night. So I wandered around for literally like an hour or something trying to find some good vegan options and there was nothing. Most places were either closed or were just meat, meat, meat. So I ended up buying another baguette just because it's cheap. So I'm basically going back to the hostel. I'm gonna have all the rice dish I still have, but um, yeah, that kind of sucks. And now it's 
raining a lot, like the heavens have opened, it's just not as fun. So it went from like the best day to a bit like, mm. I heated up my rice in the microwave and added some spinach leaves, which were free at the hostel. I'm just gonna wash my hair now because it's manky. Been sorting out all my stuff and my roommates have left. So I think I might maybe have the room to myself, which is cool. So it's like, I don't want to speak too soon. Anyone could easily still come tonight, but that'd be quite cool if I get my own room. So I literally just had the biggest freak out ever. <sighs> Breathe, Jade. Okay, basically I'm desperate for the toilet and the toilet's outside my room, but obviously to go out your room, you need your key card. And I looked in my pouch where I always keep my key card and I could not find it. So basically I ripped apart my room. I just, all my possessions, I like went through every, all of it. I opened all my packing cubes, unlocked everything, like looked everywhere. Still couldn't find it. Thankfully, I found it. I accidentally binned it. I put it in the bin. When I was binning something that was in that pouch, like an old ticket, it was caught inside the ticket. That really stressed me out. Okay. Okay. Got it, we've got it. So that morning I had a green tea with a tea bag from home. And I also made myself another classic porridge. The oats have like a soy milk powder mixed in, so it does end up quite nice. And I added a banana. So I've packed up and it's time to get back on the road. So this is Clementina. So she's Italian and I'm obviously going to Italy. So she was giving me all the tips. We're just heading to the train station now. It is about 8.30. So yeah. After a bit of confusion finding the right bus, I did get on the right bus and the views were just stunning. All these mountains. The tip is to always have some kind of food on you as well, some kind of snacks, because I snacked a lot. And something I love about my rucksack is that you can unzip and re-zip the handles. So especially when you're storing your luggage in the bottom of a bus, it doesn't really catch on things. It's literally to me forever to use. I was working out how to put the coin in here. I kept clicking it and it didn't work. But... It's very different to the UK system. <laughs> I got some Oreos for a euro. And then Leon. So I've only been in Leon for like, I don't know, 20 minutes maybe. And it's very, very hustle and bustle busy. Yeah, it's really not a touristy city at all. So it's very like people just going to work and stuff like that. Basically, I decided via the app Happy Cat, I was looking up any good vegan options like vegan restaurants because I just need like a decent big meal and they have a Hanks which is where I went with Matilda in Paris and it was amazing and relatively cheap so I'm gonna head there however it is a 45 minute trek through Lyon and with all my big stuff it's literally like weighing me down like look that's me in a mirror right now so I'm just gonna power through because I do think walking allows you to see a city more. I'm heading into the centre, hopefully get something to eat and then head straight back and get another bus. Also, I know you guys think of me as very smiley and happy, which I am, but I also have a very strong city face when I need to. Like, I'm not taking rubbish, so I'll just walk like very stern faced. Even though inside I'm like a little child, I just, I don't want people thinking that I can be messed with, so. Yeah, the stuff that I'm wearing, I look disgusting right now, but it makes me look less of a, like a young target, I don't know. I'm wearing my D of E trousers and a manky thermal. Got my hair like this, which I don't really like, but hey ho. I'm very careful to speak English because I think it again makes you more of a target, makes you more touristy. Or if I feel in danger, I will just go on my phone and I'll start speaking some French, pretending that like I'm French because I think you're just less less likely to have anyone steal stuff. Bonjour, Mama. Where? As I got into central Lyon, it was definitely a lot more beautiful than the random industrial areas near the train station. The buildings, especially in the old town, were stunning. And all the little narrow streets. I loved the bridge over the water as well. Might go in and explore Musée de Beaux Arts. Basically like, museum of pretty art. So yeah, I think I'm gonna head in to the Musée de Beaux Arts. Oh hey! Although it's free entry, I just had the worst time basically whenever they want to do a bag check. Because oh, obviously there's two huge bags I'm carrying and they literally every single zip has a padlock. And so I have to take off every padlock, I have to take it off my back, I have to let them go through my bag and then re-padlock it all. <laughs> so I explored the gardens and the many statues for a while. This is what I look like when I'm jamming to some music. 
Yeah. I actually became an expert in statues on this trip. <laughs> the reality of carrying carrying the bag, like look at me hardly fit on the bench, my bum, because of the bag. I then got some artsy shots of me looking out over the gardens, just because it was empty enough that it wasn't too embarrassing. Maybe a little bit. So after Lyon, I'm heading to Dijon, and the only reason I'm going to Dijon is because I can catch a night train from Dijon to Venice. So it's basically the easiest and best way to get to Venice. So yes i'm in a six bed couchette room which is all female it's at 9 40 my train so it's quite late so i have to chill in dijon in the dark for quite a while oh we've got a kid tour lots of kitties and then a very ravenous jade went to hanks and i got a big burger so for 11 50 i have got an amazing hamburger and a carrot cake and i'm having a dinner date with play <laughs> love you rucksack After a long, tiresome and rainy walk, I've made it back to Gare de Lyon Parc d'Or. And this dreaded train journey is where things went wrong. So here I am, look, confidently zipping up my bag, happy with my bag inside the luggage compartment, and I'm going to go sit next to it, thinking it's completely safe, and then what happens? This really shook me up for the rest of the day and made me trust people even less. There was a drunk guy running around this whole train causing some havoc, but yeah, someone tried to steal my stuff. So I ate some apples and some lentils that I got from a random corner shop. So I've just arrived in Dijon and the weather is beautiful, which is quite uplifting. I don't know why, I'm just feeling a bit like, a bit off. Like, I think that thing happening to me on the train and then there was this kind of scary drunk guy, like he just kept running around all the carriages like singing and stuff. Kind of threw me off because it was such an empty train and I don't feel that safe. But it's fine, I'm off the train now and I'm in Dijon so I'm trying to be positive. I don't really have much of a plan, I'm just going to head into Centreville. Yeah, hopefully find a cute cafe and chill in the cafe maybe and then come back and get my night train which is at 9.40. I accidentally deleted a lot of my footage from Dijon but it is stunning and then I just headed to the train station which was actually pretty safe because it was huge and I just sat inside and just waited for my train although haha <laughs> great great news um I really dislike being places on my own so I'm gonna go find someone else to stand with why is the train not here yet? it was just announced that it's platform d So I waited on that freezing cold platform for a long time, wrapping myself in progressively more clothing. I am very cold. So this is Daniela, and I've just been speaking to her. We're at the train station, waiting for the night train, and it's kind of taking forever, so we're just trying to work out if it's gonna come or not. We've been communicating through both French and English. Um, she's Italian and I don't speak any Italian. So update is delayed. We're freezing. Cold. Success. Just about frozen, so good timing. And finally, the night train. Wow, what an experience. I really wish that this shot could show the scene properly. But yeah, imagine me on the top bunk out of three in a room full of six people, the tiniest cramped room. I was the last into my room and when I woke up, everyone else was pretty much gone. The, all the beds had been collapsed and there was this girl sitting on the floor calling someone. That girl actually ended up being Bay. She was so nice. Marjorie, if you're somehow watching this, thank you for making my trip so much better. So the night train is just about the craziest thing I've ever done. Like it feels like I'm in a movie. <laughs> imagine the tiniest room you can like 
think of putting in a train, put three levels of beds next to each other in this tiny room. I had to sleep on the top, the third one. So I was a little monkey climbing up. Then stuff all the bags and the suitcases you can imagine, like next to my head and next to my feet. And then put six people in this room. And then I was the last one to come in and it was pitch black at night and the train was delayed two hours. So I came into this room and it's like all the girls were just asleep. And then I just saw like up high, they were like pointed and um, I had to like clamber up there with all my stuff. I was soaking wet from the rain. So I was up there. Well, hey there, Italy. Thank you guys so much for watching this second vlog. Genuinely, it does feel like you are coming on the adventures with me. And if you watched to this point, thank you. The editing is pretty crazy for these things and I really appreciate you being here. Have a beautiful day. Bye.